morning, everybody. Uh, this is the first sprint demo for the ArcLight Phase 2 or the ArcLight 2019 work cycle. Um, the work cycle has contributions from five institutions, Stanford University, Duke University, Indiana University, University of Michigan, and Princeton University. This is a nine-week work cycle uh, focused on three major areas, including usability and accessibility refinements, including potential design changes, revamping the tools used for indexing ArcLight description into ArcLight Solar Index, and analysis and implementation supporting better integration with request management systems, visual object viewers, and more. You can find more about the current work cycle on this page on the Sambira Wiki, uh, which includes links to our GitHub repository, our project board, and the inception deck for this work cycle. The dev team is also listed on this page. So thank you for the context setting, Mark. Uh, so I'm going to dive in here uh, with an overview of some of the work we've been we, we, we've, we've gotten through this week. Notably, I, I just wanted to point out that ArcLight is now on uh, the latest Blacklight 7. Uh, so uh, institutions that are adopting should take note of that. Um, but all in all, a fairly minor update. Um, other work that happened this week was the addition of a locale picker menu uh, in ArcLight Core. Um, so you'll note here that I switched to Spanish and we are inheriting several translations from upstream Blacklight, uh, but there are ArcLight specific terms that you know, have not been translated into Spanish yet. Um, an interesting thing about this locale picker menu is that this logic has been extracted to a gem, blacklight locale picker. Um, we notice that uh, this menu, uh, which has been implemented in the blacklight demo, um, it's also been implemented in Spotlight. Uh, this logic is implemented in several places, uh, but in different different ways. Uh, so we're hoping that uh, coming together on some patterns around internationalization uh, can be helpful upstream. Okay, uh, Jack, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Great, thanks Camille. Um, so I wanna talk about a few things uh, that have happened this week as we've uh, kicked off uh, the ArcLight uh, sprint. So a lot of the developer team is new to ArcLight, and those who've worked on ArcLight before, it's been a while since we've uh, worked on it. So a lot of the past week has been um, uh, working to uh, make sure that uh, the team's uh, development environments are set up and people can, uh, th there's uh, issues available for them to work on and start to pick up. Um, so one major piece that we knew that we needed to tackle and start at the beginning is to work on um, updating uh, our indexing code. Um, in the first ArcSight works, ArcLight work cycle, we uh, relied on using um, a project called Solar EAD uh, to um, provide us with uh, indexing uh, functionality. Um, and in the past couple of years, um, uh, one of the main dependencies of Solar EAD uh, has been deprecated. Um, and so what we wanted to do was uh, kind of rethink uh, ArcLight indexing to um, provide enhanced compatibility with uh, new types of data sources and uh, to be more declarative. So uh, in the past week, we worked on a proof of concept of that um, by uh, implementing um, a traject-based approach uh, to uh, indexing EAD uh, 2002s. And uh, traject is a... Um, uh, flexible and extensible metadata transformation system. And um, so we're using Traject now in um, uh, ArcLight alongside our current indexing strategy uh, with the hope to be at parity uh, soon. So what Traject kind of gives us the ability to kind of be declarative uh, about where we want to uh, index certain fields from. Um, and so here, here's an example of our uh, Traject uh, EAD 2002 config that kind of gives us um, gives us the ability to uh, port over logic from Solar EAD and own 
but um, kind of uh, in a declarative way um, for Traject. So that's still work in progress, but there's uh, a lot of work already done there we just wanted to share. A lot of other work has gone in this week um, for uh, various bug fixes in the project. So um, uh, Camille demonstrated here uh, earlier the uh, locale picker, but uh, one, um, one bug I wanted to call out was um, a fix to how online content viewing is done. So previously when you clicked online content and there was embeddable online content and you moved around here and you click back to overview um, and when you clicked online content, it would refresh the page again. So there's kind of an optimization now in the page there so that doesn't happen. Uh, some additional work has gone into um, addressing online content. So um, a fix was created uh, to, to uh, make it so when uh, online contents um, are viewed, um, they're now being uh, sorted in an expected uh, way each time. Um, We've also removed uh, mouse over tooltips on uh, long titles. So previously there's these kind of distracting mouse over tooltips that are now removed. Uh, we've also uh, put a fix in for um, uh, long facet lists uh, being displayed in a modal window. Um, and we fixed a count on a collections page. So when there were collections uh, that had more than a thousand items, um, those um, that count was uh, incorrect. I'm sorry, more than a hundred items. And um, a couple other fixes include uh, we unlink the currently selected component. So um, if I'm in this. Um, if I'm in looking at this content here, uh, previously there would be a link here, and with the new fix in, there's uh, no link for the currently selected component. And we've also updated the date distribution label. So when we have a um, some content and we show the date distribution, um, we've updated the label to kind of uh, not show show hide each time, but only show show and hide. So previously this said show hide, um, and so just kind of a user experience enhancement now that um, we can click show and then it changes to hide and it says the thing that it does when you click it. So um, that's all uh, our demo for this week. Um, thanks so much for joining. We'll see you next time.